What's going on guys and girls? It's Ghost Robo and this is super freaking awesome. Welcome to the first look at Dying Light 2. This is the world premiere of the gameplay that I saw back at E3 back in June. And I didn't make a video then because there wasn't a whole lot to, to show you. I could have just talked about it, but this is so much better. They're putting forth what should be the same demo I saw. And back then I was blown away. So blown away that I came out of the demo questioning if they'd ever be able to achieve what I just saw in the final retail build. So I'm super curious if there's anything different or anything less in this version, but if it is the same as what I saw, <laughs> oh baby, you are in for something super special. So we're gonna go through the gameplay, give you my thoughts and my reaction. Let me know your take in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you're excited for Dying Light 2 and away we go. From the very beginning, you'll notice that the graphics are, like, insanely good. I saw it on a huge screen, and it was... It was incredible. Like, Dying Light was a pretty good-looking game. But... They're doing some voodoo magic with Dying Light 2 visually. The cities are, are so detailed now. There's so much going on. In some ways, these early moments reminded me of, of Metro. I don't know if you guys get those vibes or not. But I definitely do. This is why we're screwed. I just fuck it, gonna get along with anyone. Enough. Look, fellas, either the colonel turns on his gold-plated taps, or we're all dead. So seeing as he's graciously agreed to talk, we're gonna dress up real nice and go to his island on our very best behavior. Now move your ass, Matt. Only if I can keep here. After the slaughter. Super weird hearing Nathan Drake as the main character. <laughs> Nolan North now taking the helm of the protagonist here. And this is where I was like mind blown. I don't know how good it looks on, on your computer or your phone, but in person this looked absurdly good. Like PS5 good. Like I don't, no, nothing else looked We're this in the good. Central part of the city, so called District 2. The city is made up of seven very different regions and each one is a truly individual environment that introduces new parkour moves, enemies, and gameplay mechanics. Aiden! What, are you not going? Oh, there's a lot of them down there. Things will get fucked up at the castle, I guarantee it. You got a plan B? I'll improvise. What if he improvises? It'll work out. You're so sure about that? Frank! Fuck! Knew it! I thought Dying Light 1 had some super good systems. It, it didn't come together for me as fully as I would have liked, but I'm hoping we're able to achieve that here with 2, because it is visceral as all heck. Weapon modding makes a comeback in Dying Light 2. Ooh. We have a modded weapon, so now let's find a good moment to use it. 
Everything is super intense as you'd expect. Yeah. That's uh that is definitely a modded <laughs> It's crazy that they're gonna combine this combat now with an extreme emphasis on storytelling and choice. Because if they can put all that together. You get out those Man. I'll look after him. What happened? What happened? Those fucking renegades shot him. Where were you? <laughs> hey, Aiden, hold still. Hey, Aiden, catch that truck, or you would never get onto that alley. The first choice, chase the truck or stay with Frank. Just keep him alive. Stay in contact. Now run, damn it, run! Hold on, Frank. Okay, let's chase the truck and see what consequences that brings. All right. The truck is gone, but this tall building looks like a great vantage point. We should use it. Now, I have to point out to you here that things get... Things get a little weird because this demo is so perfect. It, it is... It, like, everything just happens perfectly. And as you can see, life is booming on the rooftops. And this is something you can change by your actions and decisions. Hey, have you found the truck yet? Not yet. And while we're looking for this truck, like... Matt? Can you see the truck? I'm looking I wonder... I strike. Can't find the doctor. But don't think about that now. I'm I wonder how scripted this mission is. Or how like control of a vertical slice this is. That's the renegade's truck. I have it. I'll get them for this, Matt. Just keep your cool, kid. Remember, what matters is the water. This calls for something special. Oh shit. Yeah, you got a glider now, which is pretty freaking awesome. As well as that lovely uh, rope grappled type device, but you'd, you'd imagine there are a bunch of In different Light paths. Two, we have doubled the number of parkour moves, so let's use some of them now. You, you'd imagine there's a bunch of different paths, like, to this truck. They take this near perfect path, but, like, I guess I'm, I'm a little wondering how, if you didn't know exactly where to go, how this would work, how it would play out, how you would achieve the, the immediacy needed to catch this truck, because, like, the truck is moving. And I, and I guess you could just go through the the world kind of at your own pace, but I wonder if the actual game's going to have more, like, more markers indicating where to go or, or how they're going to help you navigate this basically perfect run to get to this truck at just the right time. Unless the truck is just on kind of its, like, a, a fake timer where it just appears where it needs to appear based on how, where you are, you know? But it, it looks like it's moving... At, at a defined pace so you have to have like a near perfect route but again like it, it's just one of those things that i always pay attention to is like if gameplay demos look perfect it's like will you be able to recreate that gameplay looking that perfect and then how scripted are things and, and how much have they set them up nonetheless these parkour moves are insane this looks like the mirror's edge 2 i always dreamed of I didn't really get it with catalyst maybe this will bring it plus better combat way better combat plus a nola north Led storyline, plus a bunch of choices and ways you can affect the environment. It gets crazy real quick here once we enter this town. Yeah, told you it gets crazy. So many zombies. We're deep inside a dark zone. Let's run away quickly because the infection will kill us. Hey. UV flashlight, very strong, but needs to be aimed. Beautiful weapon pickup there. It's a pretty sick move. Our stamina level seems to be too low to open it. Weapons break it left and right. And gotta get out of here quick so that infection doesn't take hold. Yeah, yeah. 
can't freaking wait for this game. I wish it was coming out this year. It would be like a savior of the fall, but it's a 2020 title. It, it, it looks like a 2020 title. I know I've said it a couple times now, but... Infection progresses. Man. Our biomarker is turning red. Alright, do not want to become zombie, even though it's pretty apparent at this point that you will be getting some special powers along the way. They don't they don't really show or talk about it here, but UV light we kind of know. Flare. It covers a big area, but lasts only for a few seconds. Putting those UV flares to good use. Jumping and climbing. I know a lot of people play Dying Light Co-op. Did you guys play mostly with friends? I'm so much more of like a solo player, so... All the different choice and, and story additions really Matt. appeal to me. Come on, Matt, Matt, I lost it, Matt! Wait. We've got a fish. Confirmed. They're heading onto the viaduct uh, now. Uh, which viaduct? Over the track. Okay, on my way. Be careful, Wade. The Colonel, he's a psycho. He doesn't mess around. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> Again, just see how perfectly everything kind of leads you, the way things break, the way things fall, and, and we're gonna end up right by the truck, so... I just, I don't know, it, like, obviously, it looks incredible, and obviously, it's real gameplay, but this part where, like, the truck and everything just lines up so magically... I'm a little suspicious. Because think about all the times he fell, messed up, and yet he's here perfectly! No matter. It's a sweet scene. Take that dude out. Guys! out! Leave me alone! Take me to the castle. Are you nuts? Just drive. To the castle we go. Try to get our water back, baby. I was doing nothing, man. Just chilling, and bam! Suddenly, everyone's clawing at each other like fucking rats. <laughs> you mind? Can't handle this sober. So much to see a gun, I shit myself. It's like a disability, you know. This one time, I saw this guy knife two dudes in the metro straight up, stab them, then pulled out a grenade. How much longer? It was a fucking grenade, man. I thought it was dead. Why did you shoot Frank? I didn't shoot nobody. It must have been some kind of fuck up, man. Was he your friend? Of course he fucking was. You gonna kill me? Hey, pick up your fucking stoner. Say everything is fine. I'm here, you bitches. Where the hell you been, right? You coming in. Yeah, he's on his... Uh, I, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> everything's fine. Just don't screw up the code. Someone will finally get to shoot you. Uh, guys, I love you. Get a bigger ass clown for this. What is the code? Three horns. No. No, no, no. Three horns. You better get it right. Look how big this world is. So much diversity and detail already, and it's only been like 10 minutes of gameplay. So this is where the Colonel resides. It seems we're entering the Heart of Darkness. So just to recap, the city is out of drinking water, and people believe only the Colonel can solve this. We tried to talk with his emissaries, but something went wrong. It's time to talk to this guy in person. The fate of the city is in our hands now. Even like the bridges, the level of detail, it, it's super impressive from an artistic standpoint. And like, of all the demos, this was the most action-packed, felt like it, insane movie scene the whole way through. I don't know if they can maintain that for the entire game, but man, there's gonna be some moments in Dying Light 2. I can already tell you that. They didn't focus on systems so much as just showing like, this is what it's like to play the game. And I hope it really does feel, What's it's wrong? awesome. Fuck! Guys! Three short ones. What is wrong?
Good thing we didn't kill Steve. Without him and the code, getting in would be much more difficult. Yeah, I bet. But that's cool to know that it's an option that you could have to sneak and stealth your way through, find an entrance versus just driving straight in. Like, there's an option where Steve is dead and you can't get chauffeured into the castle. You'd have to bust in. I'd love to see what that looks You're like. Kill me. Steve. I have to raise the alarm. Don't even try, or I'll come back for you. <laughs> Nathan Drake is coming back for you, buddy. I know his name's Aiden. I know, I know. It's just can't help but feel like Nathan Drake has got himself caught up in another <laughs> disastrous mess with another paranormal curse. But alas, that's not the case. We got to get the water back. We got to fight for for what we've got going on here. And there are different ways we can break in. So you can see, I guess, a piece of the kind of sneak your way through method. Um, we got to a, a very far point thanks to Steve and the, the drive-in. But there's like an option where none of that would have been provided for us. It's so weird to think of like the whole history and lore behind Dead Island, Dying Light, Dead Island 2, Dying Light 2. Like, if you ever want to go on, like, a really intense, twisting, turning trip down memory lane and into the future, follow the progression of these two series. What they were, what they are, what they're going to become, the different developers, their developments. It's fascinating. This is a beautiful world, though. All right, a little waterway, a moat of sorts protecting the main hub. Parkour our way over the platforms to reach this convenient ladder on the side of the wall. They've spent a lot of time on Dying Light 2, so I'm, I'm hopeful that a lot that we see, you know, like actually is going to be fully fleshed out throughout an entire experience. They've definitely had the time. This isn't rushed in any way. I'm on the island. What's with the butcher thing? All I see is regular people. Huh. Now, I should talk to the colonel. The time for talk is over. Frank's dead. You there? Hey. Our friend, Frank, is dead. If we had chosen to stay with him, Perhaps this story would look differently. But now, this raises the stakes for all of this. Great. How lovely. And Choice is already really having its effects. You know, when they initially revealed Dying Light 2 and they're like, oh, the city will change based on your decisions. I was like, come on, like, th those are risky words. Because how much can you really change and does it just become window dressing? You're like, oh, the city is blue, the city is red, the zombies are angry, the zombies are pacified. But... It looks like they're trying to take on a lot more. First of all, that's a sick kick. But second of all, they're trying to really have the game, you know, adjust to your decisions, your choices, and feel like it is a movie caliber experience based on how you play. Which, if they achieve it, this will be one of the, the big kahunas in 2020. And we already know that year is loaded with Halo Infinite. Cyberpunk 2077, Last of Us 2. It's gonna be one heck of a year. I like this like grapple rope a lot. And I always wonder, are vents actually this big? Been a lot of vent usage lately, Stranger Things season three. Obviously video games forever. Here in Dying Light 2. Some big vents. Stop hiding! Okay, this looks like the colonel's place. Let's pay the guy a visit. Into the pump room. Makes sense for waterworks, right? Everything is so freaking gory. Goodness gracious, slow-mo slicing. And in we go. 
Also, like, some strange, like, Bioshock vibes from this city. Like I told you, like, Metro vibes. Where is Slight he? Bioshock vibes. But definitely different than Dying Light 1 in this way. Where's the Colonel? She is afraid of you. Leona, there's nothing to fear. So you've come to kill me, have you? I've come to turn on the pumps. I won't let you do that. Where's Frank? He's dead. Dead? How? Your man shot him. Wait, Sam. You saw it happen? You saw my man shoot? Oh, Matt did. Matt? I sent five men. Where are they? Hey! What's happening? Look, we can count bodies later. The city's waiting for water. Stop! Water? You can't turn on the water from here. They played us, don't you understand? Don't listen to him. Turn on the pump. You do know what he wants, right? He wants you to kill me. Open the doors and let his butchers in. You want water for the city? I know how to get it. But you've got to trust me. For fuck's sake, he killed Frank. The colonel looks like he knows what he's talking about. But can we trust him? On the other hand, we really need that drinking water. And we need it today. I'm turning on those pumps. What a pity. And then right into combat we go. I love the decisions that they're setting up though. Because it does seem like you're gonna have to, you know, form allegiances. This is another new Dying Light tool. The Scorpio. It's a devastating ranged weapon that basically one-shots your enemies. Yeah, I like that. Project Scorpio in full effect here. And then it becomes a melee weapon as you flip it around. But no, like, are you going to trust the colonel and then betray the people that you were just working for? The grappling hook can also be used during combat and combined with other moves. It's pretty freaking sweet. And, and I, I, you know, any any worries I had based on the scriptedness of the, the demo, like, the promise here is so absurdly high. And hopefully this gameplay, like, this reveal here goes to show you that like Dying Light 2 is one to definitely watch for next year. I'll, I'll still, I still gotta see more. You know how much they're able to expand this into a full game world, carry it across, you know, dozens of hours of gameplay, and really make those decisions hit home. But the little threads that they've laid thus far, the the, the bits that they've teased us with, what they're showing, I like it a lot. And I also like this candy cane rope that helps us get guys swing into dudes freaking Tarzan style. And then try and take the golden helmet big boy down once and for all. With a lot of juicy spaghetti bits. Alright, we gotta turn those pumps on still, right? Hey, talk to him. I'm, I'm alive, but the colonel's getting away. Fuck him. The water's what matters. I'm turning on the pumps. These pumps should have its own valve. Fine. Okay, so check this out, what happens next here. You turn these valves on, and it, and it affects the actual layout of the city. And we could have not done this, right? We could have followed the colonel, betrayed the little base that we saw at the beginning, not turned on the water, found water later, and I presume what you're about to witness would never happen. And if it's that divergent in terms of the paths that you can pursue this game's gonna be special uh, there's a problem what's that repeat the alarm went off the pumps stopped what, what's going on Matt it's just an old piece of junk find the control room and turn on the main valve before the whole thing falls apart I'll find it stay on the radio I think it's always scary when there's this much promise but <laughs> Like, how many diverse decisions can they make? How many paths can they put full effort behind? But like I said, they've had a lot of time. All right, we got to get out of okay. here. I'm in the control room. Good. The main valve should be somewhere there. Frank would be proud. I don't even know if Frank is who we should be supporting at this point. We could have completely about-faced. 
So who knows who the good guys actually are? But check this out. Water pressure is back. And look what it does to the surrounding area. Dying Light 2 gives you the power to make choices that have massive consequences for the whole city, the sandbox space of our game. Look at that, you just like reveal a whole area. Turning on the pumps reveals a huge open world region for you to explore, with new mechanics, <laughs> quests, and things That's a fun. massive area! That is a massive space that just wasn't there before. It also changes the direction of the narrative. The Colonel was right. There really was a plot against him. But only he knew the area was flooded for a reason. And now in come those butchers and other evils that lurk beneath. Yeah, 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 that's freaking awesome. It reminds me, it reminds me a lot of, you know when you could like nuke the city in Fallout 3 and that was like such a big deal? Are there going to be segments of this game world, entire quest lines, characters, upgrades, abilities that you just don't see in a single playthrough? Or is it a case where you'll eventually be able to get there? And I know people feel different ways about this. Some people want to be able to experience everything. Some people prefer to have a tailored experience that is different from their friends. I kind of fall into the latter camp. I think it's cool if they are going to have a choice. Like, I hope that that water-filled area doesn't eventually become accessible no matter what. Like, it would be nifty if there were certain spots that you just did get to see or didn't get to see but that was incredible wasn't it let me know your take in the comments down below if it doesn't look as gorgeous as i'm making it sound trust me in person it does cannot wait to play this one cannot wait for them to reveal more hopefully we get details soon until that time there, everybody thanks so much for watching let me know what you think in the comments down below curious to see how this is received because everyone at e3 like the the buzz was like wow they've really stepped their game up and if they're able to follow through with what they've put forth throughout a, a full experience, like it's going to be special. So hit that like button if you are excited for Dying Light 2. And until next time, drink so much. Thanks again. We'll see you all online.